Okay, uh, Premiership Rugby have confirmed Saracens will be relegated at the end of this season. This is after the 35-point deduction and the £5.4 million fine for persistent long-term salary cap breaches. They were told to get cap compliant. They have failed to do so, although they won't give them much time to do so either. Um, that means at the moment Leicester will not be getting relegated, although there are calls for a second team to get relegated. And if the season was to stop now, Leicester would be the team ending up in the Championship alongside Saracens. Uh, Saracens still have to get cap compliant for next year season in the championship because that's a lower salary cap again it's aimed to control costs um so we'll wait to see what happens to owen farrell atoje and the vina Pala brothers at, and others and where they end up now liam williams we know is moving on as soon as the cap uh, punishment was initially handed out he was like i'm finding a new club to play for i still want to play for wales so he's moving on um but there's going to have to be some changes to how rugby union, not just in England works, but across the globe works, because there's salary caps in several leagues, uh, and well, Saracens cannot be the only club flouting salary cap rules that are in place. Well, they're not the only club, we know that, but they're the only club that's been caught. This is the thing, it's the way they were breaching the salary cap, and it's how they've got caught. Um, we know there were third party payments to players, we know there was an overspend. Yes, they've got a great academy and yes, they've done great things in the community where they're based and they've developed some great players. But at the same time, these rules have been in place for 20 years, it's not as if they didn't know what they were doing. It was a quite systematic cap breach for a long period of time. So what happens now? Well, if Farrell, Atoje and the Vinopos stay, for example, with uh, Saracens in the Championship, they're eligible to play for England. However, if they want to continue earning the money they're earning now, they're going to have to move on to other clubs. Now, with the salary cap being in place, that makes it difficult for other clubs to really to sign players if they've already got contracts lined up for next season. And a lot of clubs do. A lot of clubs already do have a salary cap budget for next season because they've already penned contract with players for next season. The other option is they play abroad. And that means they're not eligible for selection for England, even though these guys are the core players for England under Eddie Jones. So the RFU needs to look at its selection policy of domestically domestic players only representing your country because so many players have gone to France, for example, and they're not eligible to play. Uh, Abandonen, uh, for one, the Armitage brothers, prime examples of players who've missed out on, on test caps because they're playing in France. Um, yet, 10 years previously, they would have been selected. So the RFU needs to look at its international selection policy. I think that's actually part of the problem. The salary cap system itself needs to be reformed and, and far more transparent than what it is. I would go more for a softer, flexible cap. Um, there's there's different forms of salary cap. Now, a lot of people online think that they don't understand how salary caps work. And they don't realise how many different sports and leagues around the world have salary caps. In fact, there's more leagues than you think that have salary caps in place or spending caps in place of some kind. Um, you look at North America, every major league has a salary cap. I'm not 100% sure of Major League Rugby, but I do know that the MLS has some kind of soft cap, the NHL, Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, all have salary caps in some shape or form. In Australia, the A-League, the AFL and the NRL have salary caps in some shape or, or form, be it hard or soft caps. There is some flexibility there. Um, you look at Super Rugby, salary cap. Uh, Super League, Rugby League, salary cap. Uh, I think the Elite League has some kind of ice hockey salary cap in this country. So there are other leagues and other sports that have salary caps. Rugby Union, um, top the top 14 and the Pro 14 have salary caps. There you go. Uh, of some kind. They have a flexible cap system. So Premiership Rugby is not the only league in the world to have a salary cap. Okay. Most of the leagues that I've mentioned do not have promotion relegation, however. And this is where I think the cap needs to be altered, flexible, more transparent, and we need to have more understanding. So does that mean that the promoted clubs don't have to comply with the clap for the first couple of seasons so they can establish themselves and have a chance of staying in the league, for example? Does that mean that teams that have been in the league the longest have to comply more with the cap? I don't know. That's a flexible cap system of, of sorts. But it needs to be more transparent. We need to have more auditing of clubs. Um, we, we need to have far more transparency in how the game is governed. And I've been saying this about other sports as well, there needs to be far more transparency in how sports are governed, because clearly this governance has failed as well. Um, what will happen from next season onwards, because Saracens are going to be in the Championship, who knows? And where will the players end up? If they decide to stay with Star Saracens and take massive salary cuts, they get to play for England with some centralised contract help. If, however, they don't stay with Saracens in the Championship, where will they end up? 
and if they end up outside of England, how does that affect the test side? Because the RFE will have to change its selection policies if they want to stay um, as one of the best teams in the world. They've just made a World Cup final with a lot of these Saracens players. If these Saracens players can't stay at Saracens, where are they going to end up? What clubs are going to be able to afford to sign them in England? If not, will they look at the French top 14? Or, ironically, Major League Rugby in the US, which is an expanding league that has more teams joining. Will they look over their shoulder and go, well, it's they, they can pay us over there as marquee talent. We can get paid. Does that mean England go, hi, you can't play for England now? Now, the quality of rugby is less, I will admit that, but will they look over their shoulder at a new expanding league where there's lots of corporate money and go, I might try my hand over there. I might get a good paycheck. My career is short. I need to get paid. And the RFU selection policy is part of the problem. So we'll see what happens. There's going to be a massive fallout from this. Other clubs, have, I have no doubt, have been breaching the cap in some way, shape or form for 20 years because the cap has been in place for 20 years and clearly is flawed and needs massive reform. That's one of the things that's going to come out of this. Uh, Saracens themselves, will they bounce back at the first attempt or will they have to restructure for many years in the championship? That's another thing, see how, you know, how quickly they can bounce back. Considering they've been fined a massive amount of money. It's not a little amount of money, it's it's £5.4 million. And in rugby union terms, that is a huge amount of money. Whereas in footballing terms, for example, if that was a Premier League club like Manchester City or Liverpool or Arsenal, that's a drop in the ocean. So the fine itself for, for the finances of the sport is huge. The points deduction is, is unheard of. Um, but they're allowed to keep their title, so that's interesting. So we'll see what happens. But Saracens are, are getting relegated and we'll have some more videos for you soon and some more news with the fallout if players decide to move on or stay because Liam Williams is the only player that has announced that he's moving on at the end of the season. What other players decide to stay or move on, we'll find out. Will will that playing core get broken up and spread around the other English Premiership clubs? Will they play abroad? Will the RFU have to change their selection policy? But for now, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, place your comments below and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.